I just want to spend a couple a couple minutes uh, in uh, looking and uh, giving you a report on our 2022-2023 missions. And uh, uh, just real quick, um, I know we have a picture uh, of, a, of the map of what our missions covers. And um, so in down the corner, we've got the Troll family. Remember, uh, of course, for the Troll, um, uh, was murdered uh, as he was serving the Lord in Afghanistan. And uh, his uh, uh, wife and children uh, returned to, of course, it's Brother Jack Britt's um, daughter is Mrs. Troll. And um, he's, he's over there in Sanborn, New York. Good friend of mine, very dear friend of mine. And um, so they have spent some time up with him here, but, but mostly down in... Uh, <coughs> right outside of Powell, Tennessee, which is where S Brother Steve's parents are. So he spent a lot of time there. So, um, so they're there. Uh, their oldest daughter is enrolling this next fall in Crown College, where they came out of and they met. So it's great to see that. But that's why we have them, because he's not, you know, they're in Tennessee. But um, um, so they're, they're there. So um, and then we've got Miss Abigail, our student uh, our college student, it's been a long time tradition here at Center Road Baptist Church. If folks are away at Bible College, that uh, they get some uh, a stipend per month, just like any other missionary. So, um, so we're excited about that. But, um, and if we see now, I do have copies of this on the back table if you want to grab that. But, um, so these are just some of the locations. But and let me just say this at the outset that Last year, when we were getting ready, getting ready for from 21 to 22, I really had this thought that, um, you know, we really want to have a a global influence, and I feel it's a, it's incumbent as uh, as a leader in this church to make sure that this, uh, that Center Road's dollars are going to uh, active missionaries, uh, and that we are well represented around the globe. So we did, we had a meeting last August, and we really went through a lot of our, uh, from 21, even in, in 21, and then in 22, we've done a lot of, uh, I won't review all the things that we've done uh, since I've been here, but, um, but we've, you know, we went through everyone and, and made sure we got all the information on everybody that, that the, you guys were already uh, supporting even before I came. And so some we found were like retired, and so we, we communicated with them like we really want to shift our dollars to if you're comfortable, let's let's uh, support active missionaries that are on the field, that kind of thing. So uh, not just to abandon them in their life of service. See you later. Um, but uh, but so we worked all that out. We communicated. We didn't just drop people. We communicated with people, and um, so we. Uh, but and then we wanted to, and then part of us praying and choosing. For where we wanted to, to do, we wanted to make sure that we were represented, like there was pockets of the country. So if you look at this report, we have the continent or region identified, because we want to make sure that we are represented in every, you know, in every region of the, of the world. Amen. To have a real global outreach, it's make sure that we are well represented um, all around the world. So uh, just within, so within our new uh, our new missionaries, just this past year. Uh, Brother Justin Dye in Papua New Guinea, uh, and that was, again, that was underrepresented over there in Australia. And these, by the way, these weren't the only missionaries that we had to support, right? These were just folks that we really knew, and I, 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 we know the Dyes, of course. We've known his dad. I've known the family for many years. So that was an easy choice. Uh, I knew him as a young man before he went over, So, uh, but uh, he's got a great testimony, so... Uh, but that's so that was one and then we added then we were kind of not represented of course up in Siberia uh, with the Dean family but but uh, so uh, brother Roy uh, Stelzig who will be here uh, in May as a matter of fact he'll be traveling through May or June I forget which but he's traveling through so we'll get the chance to hear from him but he's way up there he is up there I can't even pronounce the city he's in I don't I'm not sure he can pronounce the city <laughs> Maybe the maybe the the uh, uh, the seals on the on the on the by the waters can you can you know the uh, the the it's a long Indian name right so um, but it's uh, um, it's he's up there <laughs> so we're excited to, to have have those folks and 
I, I know that we increase like some of the other changes. Um, let me just go over some of the other changes. Uh, Brother and Mrs. Clark uh, came, they were on deputation to go to uh, Liberia. And, uh, and then we also were, uh, were um, uh, supporting Monique Lindsay in Liberia. And um, so we, we kind of divided up what we would normally give folks, we divided up between them. Because again, I was thinking regionally, that's the idea. So, uh, but they, they didn't make it, they were on deputation, they were there before, there's some, some visits and some time there, some years ago, they were on deputation to go there, but it just didn't work out for them to go there. They were gonna go to Zambia with, with, with our, uh, the, the, the Vision Zambia that we support under Brother, Brother Barnhouse, but then, then they had an emergency in their family and they just came off the field altogether. So we took that, those funds that we were giving to the Clarks and we just put it back in with, and raised Monique Lindsay's up to 50, which is our, you know, our normal deal. So, uh, so they, and then, and then um, we had another, um, uh, Brother Kuhlman had passed away last year. His wife is in retirement. She was the one that basically said, look, I'm comfortable. Go redirect those funds to somebody else. So, um, so we, you know, we upped. Uh, Abigail from 25 to 50. I mean, you think $25 these days, it's about three cups of coffee. Amen. Um, so we wanted to, you know, while she's at uh, serving the Lord and, and training over at uh, Bob Jones University, we thought we'd get her a little bit more spending money. Amen. Um, and um, so uh, some of the couple of the other things we did in that meeting was we were assessing things both financially and philosophically. And uh, along the lines that I have mentioned about uh, those that were retired, as I just mentioned, but also those that were pastoring American churches. So there was two folks that were pastoring American churches. And, you know, when, when Center Road had, had started it, they were in different circumstances with them where they're at now. So, like, for instance, Brother Jim Donath, very dear friend of mine, who I've known for 30 years, uh, worked under, he was a music director and I was an associate pastor over at Old Time Baptist Church. He's over an evangelical Baptist church in Lovejoy. And, um, and uh, so now initially he was, you know, when Center Road began supporting him, he was in a ministry of helps. He was traveling as an evangelist. He was preaching in churches and he was going, making missions trips to Europe and, and helping out, helping out here. And then when his father-in-law, Brother Carpenter, uh, uh, was retiring, he came and took that church. Um, we still continue to support him for like 15 years or so. So I just let them, let them know, again, this was part of our meeting. It wasn't just me. It was part of our meeting that, that uh, because there was one thing, but actually it was Brother Rader said, or maybe he was a little sensitive as being a father to a missionary in a foreign country. He has a little bit more skin in the game. And he said, you know, these, uh, at least some of these American uh, pastors or folks, they can go get a job to supplement their income. Folks in the foreign field can't do that with visas and the working visas. They might, they might not be able, they might be denied altogether. And um, so we, we just let him know that, I mean, he was only getting 25, you know, so we put that elsewhere. And, um, and uh, he was cool with it. And uh, also Brother Lawrence, we, we, he was uh, uh, supported for, uh, as he was starting this church in West Virginia, but it was, it was many years ago. The church is established. Both he and his wife are working secular jobs, so he was fine with that too. We just said, okay, we're gonna divert your funds to people that are serving the Lord in foreign lands. Uh, again, because if, it, it, you know, when push comes to shove, you can get a job, they can't. We can get a job here, they can't. So, um, so those are just some of the changes that we had uh, this year, of course, uh, coming off just in 2021 when we added, uh, like I mentioned, the trolls and um, um, the, um, of course, Abigail and uh, the Imsons. Um, and I think that was, yeah, that was it for, for 21 when we had made some changes there, a lot of busy, busy changes there. Um, but, um, so those are just some of the changes. I want, I don't want to take too much time here, but, um, one of the things is, let, let's go to that next one is just some of the, ne and about also we, there's some financial things on there as well. If you want to grab it on the way out, you know, what missions conference cost last year, missionaries that came in and preached throughout the year. Uh, we have a general mission fund. Then we have a designated fund. 
So if it's, if it's like, hey, I want to go support uh, Brother So-and-so. Now, they, we don't support them in our general mission fund, but you want to support them, um, then we, we can facilitate that still through Center Road uh, Baptist Church, and we'll, we'll cut the check to them. But then we inform them that this is a designated, uh, matter of fact, someone just started supporting Brother Dale Morey, uh, the Liberty Behind Bars gentleman who's, who works with the jails and uh, New York prison systems. And uh, so we wrote him and said, hey, this, there's someone in our church. They really love you. They want to support you. And as it comes in, we'll send it out. But it's not that we're, you know, aligning as a general, ju- not yet anyway, right? So, uh, so we do had, we had some of, we had some of those given. Just want you, if you make sure you understood what designated support was on that thing. So I just wanted to show you this real quick because it's like, okay, again, the reason I mention um, the, um, uh, the, uh, uh, the looking at things philosophically, um, financially, and geographically is, okay, so, so let's, what's the next phase? You know, like, you know, always, we're always looking for next people. So we've got some other, we've got our eye on some people. We're praying about adding more this year. And we'll see if we can right out of this conference, you know. We've got the Whipples. They were here, I think it was uh, three years ago. Um, they came through here on a Wednesday night. They're to the Netherlands, the Whipples. Uh, Brother Larry Curtis, who I've known for like 30 years. What a great, what a great man uh, Brother Larry Curtis is in Great Britain. Uh, Brother, Brother um, uh, Terry Daniels, who we do support. His son is right next door in Uganda. I've just, I've just really had a burden to support him. Uh, the Midkiffs in Indonesia, that's really a spot that we're, you know what I mean, that we're a little weak on is Indonesia there uh, to the left of Papua New Guinea. So these are just some of the areas we're praying about, looking ahead to add this year. And then I've got, I've got a number of others. I mean, I've got a whole list of, um, of others that I'd like to, um, you know, get involved with. I know like... Uh, um, the uh, uh, brother, brother Bob DeWitt, or, and or some of his Golden Land Baptist missions missionaries that are on the ground in Burma in, or, uh, or Myanmar or Old Burma, uh, which is right to the left of India there. Um, so that's, that's another area and individual that I love. He's, he texts me all the time, and his numbers are just crazy uh, in the stuff that he's doing. So, uh, so there's, uh, those are just some things that we're looking at. Again, just to think... Uh, think globally and geographically. Amen? So uh, if you have any questions about that, grab one of those uh, reports off the back table, and we will pray about what we're going to do next. Amen? But for now, let's have Miss Ruth come. Any, but by the way, any question about that? Right off, Just right out of the chute there. Embarrass Ruth to stand here during a... I'm used to it. <laughs> That was good, though. That was See? 
It's been a treat to have Brother Josh Rhodes with us, and uh, great to get to know him and his story, and uh, just a really a, a good man. He's a, he's a good servant of the Lord, but he's a good man, and it's been great to uh, uh, just spend some time with him this week. Brother Josh, I appreciate your company, and uh, why don't you come on up and preach to us in our closing message of uh, this year's missions conference. Praise the Lord, amen. It's amazing that song was written. Uh, some don't consider him a missionary, but he sure impacted a mighty lot of people. And uh, I was raised on Pastor Pirate Music. Uh, one of my favorites, Camp Kukawaka Woods. They're the wildest, craziest animals known to man singing on that tape. But uh, when they went to... Africa on one of those, boy, I, I just, I, mean, I could hear the animals, I could hear the animals calling, I could, I could see the people, you know, looking, well, where you at? You're supposed to come, where you at? And uh, I thank the Lord for that man, his ministry. You never know what the Lord will do if you don't submit yourself to the Lord, you, 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 you know, and uh, I want to look at tonight. If I'd open the, to the right passage, amen. To 1 Timothy 1, I want us to consider the possibility. What if? You know that in North Carolina, there's a big deal with a lot of folks I know. I don't believe I've ever bought a lottery ticket. I've done some stupid things, but that's not one of them. If you win, you better tithe like the devil, brother. You better tithe heavy, man. But the possibility, what, what would happen? D.L. Moody said, the world has never seen the effect of someone wholly committed to God. What would happen if each of us said, I'm going to give myself 100% to honoring the Lord in every facet of my life, not just church service time, not just church activity time, in every facet, in every uh, diamond ring sometimes are cut square, and there's four sides, you can look at that ring. Every side of our life that God knows, if we gave 100% of it to God and to his honor, to his glory, what's the possibility God might do something in our lives? I shared with you, I think I shared with you how my daughter told me to pray for lights when there's no electricity. And God turned the lights on. There's not a scientific reason for that. There was no electricity. The power was off. The city shut the power off. But my daughter just believed God. She said, Daddy, you pray for lights, come on. Sometimes when we grow up in church, we just sort of think, well, that's childish thinking to believe God so deeply, to be, believe God so holy, to believe God so with everything that we have. Some of us, we serve God, but we got a parachute. We have a backup. We have a security blanket we have a I'm going to serve God but you're not touching that right there well I don't want it I'm asking you to consider what's God and you need to do well, I want to get on God's page I'm not trying to find out what to preach God's worked in my heart I, I want to get on his page I used to say I, I give God a blank check I, I, I just God you have the check or the bitcoin or the gold or the fur or the you know the skin sheep whatever whatever currency God wants to use God is, is yours at the mall they want visa or cash or plastic God you, you can have my God you can have my thrift store shopping time and I love thrift stores if I had a nickel for every time I said the word thrift store this week we'd all be rich I love thrift stores God I'm going to give you my time going to thrift stores maybe you know, I, they're, they're, they're the, one of the preachers that was here, he has this track with the 
waterfalls on the front and on the back. They shared how some people who went over the waterfalls and lived. The missionary from Lighthouse called the young man who now is now a grown man down in Alabama. He said, can I share your story, how you survived? The man went on to tell him, I, not only did I survive, I got saved. And he's trying to convert the preacher man calling to him from here. And so they, they took us to Niagara Falls, and I was, I got lost. I mean, I, me and Brother Nadaro, we were just sort of looking around. A lot of people were gone, so we got a lot of water going over the falls. And we were just wandering around. And so I said, let's go back to the van at the top of the hill there, and they'll come find us. So I'm standing by the entrance. I'm going to read this passage. I'm going to stand. I'm going to preach away. And, and I had this, 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 his track on the back of gospel scriptures. And so I stand at the entrance. Sometimes we, 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 we don't talk to you about the wildest. God don't want our time. He don't want our time. So sacrificing thousands of hours from last year to now of people in this church to, to, to minister on this church's behalf. He gave us time. I can't do all, but you know, I got this one thing I can do. Can I do that? Let's go back to where we started in 1 Timothy tonight. Let's stand and we're going to preach a little bit. Get out before 12, praise God. <laughs> I'm just warming up. 1 Timothy chapter 1, and uh, we're going to read verses 12 through verse 15 tonight. And the Bible says, And I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who hath enabled me, for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. Let's pray. Lord, Father, I pray you'd meet with us tonight, Lord. It's been a blessed week. My heart's been encouraged. I've been boasting to my family on the phone about, boy, the attendance has been good and the meals have been great and the preachers, boy, the, the, from Kenya and the Philippines and working with the Jews, Lord. And, Lord, just this, this Lord, the sun does not set on this church's outreach around the world with missions and I thank you for their faithfulness and sacrifice Lord I I beg you that you'd meet with us tonight I pray Holy Ghost you'd work in our hearts that we would just let, 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 let we'd let you consider the possibility that we would consider what if God wants me to do just a little bit more of something God if everybody done something Oh, what a turnout it'd be. I pray we the boy, I pray the devil get a black eye tonight, God. I, I pray there'd be more lighthouses planted around the world because of the missions given to this church. I pray you bless those that are, are self-employed and bless those that are working in the medical field and working blue collar and white collar and working third shift and swing shift and Lord just trying to get by. I pray you'd bless their giving. I pray you'd grow their faith. Lord, I know you're faithful. I pray you'd help us tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. you. May be seated. The possibility. We're going to be talking about commitment. I know that's a surprise, but we're going to, we're going to go there, okay? And if I get up in your kitchen and use some of your dishes, please don't get mad at me, all right? All right? I think I've got whooped in these halls as a kid. Uncle John may remember better than me, but I, I was pretty good for getting three or four a day. And I know I spent some time here, and uh, 
And I think I remember uh, Mr. Redder telling me to quit screaming on the bus. I, I just had a good time with that kazoo, but I thought everybody's supposed to jump on those seats and blow the kazoo. And No, you're not supposed to do that. I was committed to that kazoo, but the Lord's helped me from that time to now. And I, I've known Brother Redder, you've been known you a little while. Appreciate your faithfulness, sister, your faithfulness. Pastor, God, God prepped you at, at old time for such a time as this. Church family, this ain't the time to walk away. This is the time to reload. It's time to take another breath. It's time to get that foot in shore. Amen. Let's get in the Bible. Amen. And amen. I just I want to say thank you, church family, for your kindness to me this week, uh, for flying me up here, for coming and getting me. But that, that prophet's chamber, well done. That's a very comfortable prophet's chamber. Thank you for that. The snacks were provided, the coffees I <laughs> I had a little coffee this week. Y'all have been very kind to me. Thank you very much. And my wife and children send their love. And my mom said, tell everybody Peggy, Peggy loves them. I tell them, Mom, I'll tell them. So I've told you. So the first, the first this evening, the possibility, the possibility. Paul wants to look at talking about being committed in his placement. He says, I thank Christ Jesus our Lord who hath enabled me for that he counted, he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. I see his satisfaction. He said, I, I'm thankful. Nine different times in the New Testament, the Apostle Paul is recording as saying, I thank God. I thank my Lord Jesus. I thank. Thankfulness dripped out of his mouth. You know, if, if you ever have a hard day, Lord, I thank you for giving me strength. Brother Josh, I don't have any strength. Lord, I thank you for giving me breath. Brother Josh, to Guyana and all you heard in the predator letters was I'm being targeted by the law here. I'm being mistreated by my landlord. Why is me, me poor thing? Hey, you know what? I was not set on top of a wooden pole and dipped in oil and set ablaze like the Christians and heroes say. Hey, there's much to be thankful for. Amen. And Paul said, I thank God. Hey, that God knows his numbers. He said, because he counted. He, he went numerically and counted. Hey, he counted me uh, uh, faithful. What's God's count on us? When God sees our walk with him, how's my count doing? From this week, seven days back, how's God's count on us then walking for him? Paul said, God's counting me faithful. And there's a wonderful recliner in that mission department. And I'm here to tell you, uh, I'm not going to get many steps in if I lay on back in that chair. But, 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 when, but when I can get on my feet, hey, I'm going to go somewhere. We don't need to be in the recliner thinking I'm, a, I'm preparing for heaven. Let me get in my recliner. No. And he said, I've got a work to do. God's going to, I want to be counted faithful. So as I serve. Lord, plug me in somewhere and let me blossom and bloom where you planted me. There's a preacher in Georgia or, or South Carolina, right on the border there, South Carolina, Georgia, pretty good-sized church, and, and he, he wouldn't say hi to me. But anyway, uh, years ago, he was a teenager, and, and uh, he wanted to be in that church, and great dinners in there. And, and the pastor said, preacher boy, you want me to use the gospel? He said, yes, sir. You want to preach for 4,000? Oh, yes, sir. school. They have an auditorium, about 3,000. They've got a daycare center. There's a couple doors there. He, I mean, he had like 197 different doorknobs to go through on Monday with a screwdriver. What you doing, big man of God? What you doing for, for the Lord? What you going to do to change the world? I'm tightening doorknobs for the pastor. You know, if that boy had got mad sideways, if he'd have quit God, his job won't be big enough. If he'd have quit God, he didn't get the attention he wants. 
They didn't quit God because of whatever reason it comes to our mind and we want to get mad at them. God wants to use them the way he is now. There's a couple doorknobs in our life. Sometimes it's not about them seeing us, it's them seeing him. And as we serve, I've only been here a couple days. I've got to watch a host of people serve. Amen. Y'all my heroes. I, I, I was told by one preacher, Josh, you want to be a great leader? You want to preach four thousands? No, I was eating up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like Barney Fife. Yeah, you know, I just, you know. He said, leave this room. Preacher, I let a room around the machine shop, pick another table. Wow. He, he was thankful, his satisfaction. He was always committed in his placement. Do we scorn where God's planted us? Do we, do we, do we, are we upset, disturbed, not satisfied where God has planted us? God, the, the possibility, hey, uh, he's committed in his placement, the satisfaction. Hey, but then it says uh, set in motion. He was enabled. It means to strengthen, to be or become strong, to render more capable or able for some task. Hey, where God guides Drive our car home, and we walking side by side. There's about a little minute and a half there where you ready to go home? Yeah. You ready? Yeah. Let's go say Yeah. What if we just got real crazy psychotic and said, "We're going to church Sunday. I'll take this lunch. Mama's cooking a good meal. We're going to do the other conversation." I know. Now we're going to do the conversation. What if we were set in motion? We were enabled. What if we just took God? What was the possibility? We just took God at his word and just obeyed. Just obeyed. I'm not trying to climb out of Everest. I'm just trying to walk the steps of the good man are ordered by the Lord. It will order yours too. Amen. The possibility I just obeyed God. Amen. More than just missions week. More than just youth camp. More than just Christmas time. I mean, just, just obey God. It will blow the devil's mind. Community be like, man, that's something different over there. Is that, I mean, I know the church a long time, but there's just something different. It's a church full of people being enabled by the same God that enabled the apostle Paul. Hey, he was enabled. He was set in motion. Hey, he was steady. He was faithful. That means reliable, dependable, worthy of trust, being placed upon. If I ask. Because while I'm giving you the 97 reasons because I'm a pastor's heart and I'm an evangelist where I cut your head off, but I'm telling you 97 reasons why I could be over here putting somebody else in motion. Pastor, you need help this. All right, we're gonna, I'm not going to make up to you. No, no, you go. Pastor, you want me to go take care of this stuff? I'm not trying to do that. But, but Pastor, what is it maybe next week? Can you let me know what it is? Okay, maybe I can start going maybe once a week, maybe an hour a week. Pastor, is there something I could just pray about? I don't even need to know details. But is there a prayer list I can use, Pastor? Faithful, he was steady. He was committed in his placement with satisfaction. He was set in motion. He was steady. He says, and uh, uh, putting me into the ministry. Ministry is mentioned 22 times throughout the word of God. And, and, and uh, uh, it, it is a role especially done on the behalf of others. Ministry is not what can I get you so I can please myself. Ministry is serving and serving where I have no right, I have no role, I have no title. I am serving on behalf of someone else to serve somebody else's needs and wants. And that don't feed our flesh. But when our flesh gets fed, it don't want to serve. 
and serve. I was at a pastor's conference, and there was some impressive preachers there, and pastors there, and evangelists there. And they said, go around the room and tell us who you are and what you've done before we had the big shindig. That means a big church service, okay? And, and you know, I'm a pastor of this church. I've been there 80 years, and I've got these 97 pastors, and I've got this Bible college, and I've got a PhD, and I earned linguistics in 19 languages. And I'm like, is he him? And oh my, so I'm just looking at him. And, Next, I've been evangelism, been in, been in over 400 countries of the world, and I'm like, still doing how many countries in the world are we? <laughs> You've been around the world twice, I've done that story. They get to me, who are you? Uh, I'm the, uh, yeah, I'm the glorified mud ball. I'm a servant of the king. I want to be a blessing and honor. Next guy, next guy. When you, when you tell people that's what we are, I know a man who owns a machine shop making very high se six and seven figures, and on his business card he has Mr. Brackett, servant. He hasn't forgotten who he is before the Lord, whether I have a dollar or whether I got a bank, I'm a servant. Hey, the ministry, the ministry. He was committed in his placement, number one. Number two, he was committed due to his past. I know I preached on that a little bit. It says, who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. Hey, he's a slanderer. He blasphemed. He was irreverent towards what is being held sacred. He, the word of God, he would be cursing and saying terrible things. That's who I was. Why am I committed? Because due to my past, I was a slanderer. I was sedistic. I was a persecutor. I said, no, what's the difference? I'm a redneck, blasphemer, persecutor. That look like bully, bully. Are you going to beat him up? Are you going to beat him up? But I went and looked that word persecutor up. It means a person who participates in the systematic hunting. I had to look those words up. The systematic hunting of an adherent part of a particular religion to inflict pain or death. I got two kids, and my daughter can be a little dad and buy a child bombs with us. She wants to cook a little. My son, he's going to be like, I'm going to snipe that bug. You know? They'll be out in the yard and he's going through the grass, and they'll find this poor worm come up out of the ground. My son's like, Dad, you can scratch them off. You can scratch the wire, you know? <laughs> poor worm. He woke up in the morning to cause as much harm as possible. He was committed due to his past. He was a slanderer. He was sadistic. The severity injurious to cause injury. It means a, a, a violent person that's characterized for offensive, disrespectful acts that are, are, that, are, that are outrageously forward or bold. Wanted to, wanted to be as obnoxious as possible. In North Carolina, there's a big movement for kids to be born a boy and want to be a girl and be trans and be accepted. And you say, well, the Bible says that's wrong. You know, you're a bigot. You're a, you're a, you're a racist. You're a hating. You're, you're a non. I didn't write that. That's the Bible. And your, 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 your son grew up in this church. I, I'm not the bigot. That's past the Lord. And they want to get mad and angry and. You know what? They, they want to cause injury. Well, the, the, but that whole movement just wants to be as forward against God as possible. Paul's behavior was in that same path. He said, I was injurious. But it gets better, don't worry. He is secured and is being committed due to his past. How? He said, I obtained mercy. I became the recipient of leniency 
and compassion. When I should have been uh, thrown in a, I mean, uh, 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 I feel that I, I should have been thrown in jail and the key should have been thrown away and I still would have had to say God has been good. Hey, but God said what I could do to you, I'm not going to because you've accepted my son. I've been in places where the judge could have thrown the book, could have had severe time. The mercy was shown. We've had a place where our men and the ladies rescue mission looking at 20, 30, 40 years, murder and worse. The judge said, why should I not throw the book at you, young man, young lady? Stand up. church service <laughs> they can't shut up they can't be quiet I say Steve how'd it go he said hey the judge showed me mercy the joy beaming off their face the ex exhilaration in their soul they are 200% on board for hey I got mercy from the Lord Hey, Paul said, hey, I need to be committed due to my past. I obtained, I received, I gained a hold of. That being in the person of the Lord, Jesus Christ. We've seen a committed in his placement, committed due to his past. Committed because of the preeminence, verse 14, and the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. Look at that sequence taking place there as the grace of our Lord the grace of the resulting activity that is a necessary consequence of genuine, be beneficent goodwill. And I had to put this on there because I don't know where they got them other words from. Giving me what I don't deserve because of the actions of another. He said, I, I had the grace of who? The Lord. Not the pastor's grace. Not Mama's grace. Not my great benefactor's grace. No, Almighty God. He took his grace, and, and, and in, in that sequence, I, for the preeminence of Almighty God, God took time for me and gave me grace. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, oh, the grace of God. You get over the grace of God. I, you, you're not going to want to do nothing for missions. Oh, the grace of God will save the meanest witch. The grace of God will save the drunkest drunk, the, the biggest whore, the politician, grace of God will save them all. Yeah. Who's doing the will? Yeah. In Charlotte, North Carolina, Pastor John Weed of Flesh is pastor of every nation's Baptist church, and he runs a tight ship. He, he conducts himself very straight and narrow. But he knows the names of every homeless individual in several blocks of his church. Yeah. Another pastor was hoping during the meeting that Pastor John prescribed for legitimate needs. How do you know these things? He said, I'll tell you, it's God loves the ugly. Yeah. The ones we don't want to be around. The ones we don't trust our kids around. Yeah. I know God died for them. Right. Yeah. Who's going to tell them yeah. if we don't? They committed because of the preeminence. We see the sequence of the grace of our Lord. This is the, the, the surpassing, exceeding abundant. That means to be or become numerous or abundant in a degree greater than normal than something else. Ephesians 3 says, uh, uh, we're talking about exceedingly, exceedingly abundantly above all that you can ask. That's what we can wrap our minds around. So what do I give in mission?
consider the possibility. What if God said, just take another couple of steps for me? In conclusion, I want to share. Uh, I've enjoyed fellowshipping with your preacher. I have. I really have. And uh, I shared something thinking it would just be me and him. And he said, no, no, no. Tell my church tonight. I said, yes, sir. Uh, well, my wife and I got married. Uh, like any new marry, newly married family, <laughs> I was broke. My wife spent her savings making the, having the buying the flowers for her wedding. Her pastor paid for our honeymoon. And uh, two events in our new, new in our marriage really just helped help me. It helped me. It grew me. I got a heap more to grow. There was a revival. They were trying to provide money for a foundation in Guyana. We used to support Brother Runyon. And down there, the Nationals say Brother Runyon walks around Guyana with his heart in his hand as he shares the gospel because he should have been dead, oh, about 18 surgeries ago. I think he's up to 21 or 23. He has the respect of the National Pastors. Even the National Pastors don't even, even like each other. They all know that God's hands are and uh, we were in Trinidad with my wife, newly married, and there was a missionary there, a national from Guyana, and he's trying to raise money for a foundation. I think I said we had $153, $157. And then I go overseas for a year and about a month and a half, so I start racking up $150 of Trinidad money. And my wife said, Joshua, I think God wants us to give all that money for that man to have a foundation over there in Guyana. God's working in his church. He's rude to people who are getting saved, and I... I think God wants us to give all our money. <laughs> okay, not your money. <laughs> I said, baby, I, I think God wants us to give five dollars. She said, no, no, I'm, I'm serious. I want better, but I was, <laughs> Lord, I'm broke, broke now. I, my wife, I don't even have money. We both broke. We walked home in her village to her house. I'm thinking, I've been married seven days. I'm now broke. I owe money on the phone cards to call my wife before I married her. I don't have a paying job for a month and a half. I don't think that was a Christian home class I took in college. We went, I woke up, went to church in Trinidad. I didn't know it, but in Trinidad, when you get We went home Wednesday night, Sunday morning that happened, Sunday night that happened, Wednesday night that happened. My wife pulled me in the bedroom. I said, hey, how you doing, honey? She said, no, 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 good, good. I said, well, I think God wants money. Oh, that's probably me, that's probably money. She said, no, we'll stop by now, we just don't know where. We got an eight, nine fold job. And my wife still didn't know how to get paid. I was so happy. She knew a little bit. We're having a mission conference in our church. I worked as a janitor with a forklift at an Eaton Corporation. They're making these metal shavings in my parts for these cars, these hybrids. I dumped the metal shavings. I made like eight twenty-five an hour. I was busting down a big $1,200 a month. Our house payment was $500. We had a car payment. It was like two sixty-nine. dollars full insurance because it wasn't paid off yet. Gas to and from work. Gas to church and back. We would buy a big bag of chicken from Aldi's for like $8 and live on that for about a week and a half. We'd buy five, I'm serious, we'd buy five pound bags of rice and get some gravy and mix it with that chicken. And we'd eat that. That was, there wasn't no other, that was dinner for the month. We're eating chicken and rice and gravy. And we have a mission conference and my pastor had a man come in and he said, what does God want you to give? Don't tell your wife. What God tell you? What God tell you? And I went home and I said, I know the number. No. 
summer. She's frugal. She saves money. I, honey, what, how, how much do I tell you? I said, you're going to get mad at me, Madam Marge. No, I'm not going to argue because I'll tell you the truth. There was nothing I got. <laughs> she said, God took 25% of our household furniture. Honey, that's $300. Come by the house. We start giving it. I give it like, Lord, I feel like a, like a billionaire. I just, there's the dirt. All goes. I, I'm going to church, working. You get it out. God bless. I got in church with God. He blessed us. I said, hey, I'll work at this chemical plant. And uh, you, you go from uh, 825 down. Yeah, I'm going to have cash over the floor. Listen, 825. God, you can go by about 12, 15, about two months. second and three days on third and then your seven days a month you're off work completely but you still get paid because of the paycheck and how it's set up. I said shut the front door. I'm serious. He said I'm serious. Pastor says you're working like a wild man trying to take care of your family. I said man we really need some work in our plants. I said I ain't telling mess this up but I sure like to do that. You know what I didn't get that job until my wife and me said I was just going to trust you. We're going to take the chance of a possibility of maybe you'll keep your word. Maybe you'll honor the word of God. Maybe you're the same God that led the Israelites across the Red Sea, the Jordan River, around Jericho. No battle was happening. They won. The same God that took Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Daniel in the lion's den, three boys in a fiery furnace coming out, not even smelling like smoke. The same God that told Peter to walk on that water. They come on over here. Let's talk a while. Peter walked on that water, the same God where in the Old Testament a dead body falls on a lash's bones and jumps back out alive. The same God is today. Amen. What's the possibility? Yeah. We're just between us and God. We take a paper where there's not even a spot for a name. Before God, this is what we do. What's the possibility? I don't want to know the number. I don't. God, I'm going to take it your word. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. I'm going to pray more because I don't make it. I'm going to watch what I spend on more because, boy, I sure can't waste it. God, I'm just, what's the possibility if God honors his word? Oh, you can be like Paul. Realize the possibility of being committed to Christ pays off every time. You don't survive three shipwrecks. You don't survive 195 stripes on the back. You don't survive being stoned several times and left for dead if God did not have a purpose. Like God had a purpose for Paul. And Paul just took it up on the possibility of God faithful. Why would I give more to missions? Why would I sacrifice? Why would I take that step of faith? If, if Because God took the possibility of sending his son. He knows all things. But nonetheless, he sent his son so that I could get born again. And that God shed his blood on that cross and rose that third day. Hey, what's the possibility there might be somebody waiting, waiting, in one of those green spots, waiting? Just would, would God send a man there? Would God send a family there? What's the possibility of, hey, uh, of, of each family in the church thinking, I can't do this, but I can do a little bit more? What if? Every family says, I'm going to take the possibility and chance of God keeping his word. Amen. And in 20 years, look back. Find out I can live on 25% going to missions and tithes. And I mean, my wife and I, we, get, we live on like 45% of our crust. I, well, I said, where are we going? I said, tithes, they promise, taxes, and, and then uh, we got some requirements. I, proud of the 17 earth country he owns. He just goes, he goes out he's got, you know, with a suitcase, Pastor. A suitcase in his hand. That was all his belongings we brought back with a suitcase. 
Son will tell you as a 10 year old boy, God takes care of us. I think there's some more places on that beautiful map. Oh, if the missionaries would be supported there because of this church. You know, I'm going to tell you as a missionary, I've been doing it since 2012. It's not the churches of a thousand that set this on the field. It's not. I know I'll bone over. I'm so sorry. It's churches this side. Back on the map, we were family. We took a chance. There's fruit bearing to your account for all eternity, and even as I'm not even in Guyana because you took a chance of possibility. What if this family just did a little bit more to give God the glory? Fuck the possibility. This could be the greatest year for missions at home and abroad. Would you believe God?